All right, let's talk about guns. You guys ready yeah, to talk about let's guns? Let's talk about guns. Yeah. Okay. Pew, pew. That's all. That's always yeah. a question. That's a hot topic. Hot topic. All right, we're not going to talk about guns. Planet Green Trees episode number four hundred ninety-one. The uh, question posed here is, Jim, we were talking and also the discussion regarding uh, Michael Thompson mm -hmm. and some of his punishment as a uh, marijuana prisoner was related to his uh, guns. Let it be known that uh, according to a 2017 Gallup poll, there are 393 million registered firearms in America. How many? Me 393 million registered <laughs> firearms in America. Wow. That's pretty Meaning that's pretty that there are currently more guns than, than people. people in America. <laughs> wow. Even more surprising, half of that total amount of weaponry is owned by only 3% of the population. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> With wow. numbers Who like these. these people? It may come as a surprise that basically anyone in America over the age of 18 cannot yet purchase a firearm. How could that be, you would say? Well, there's some exceptions that are enforced, and uh, a lot of it depends on federal, state law, and, and the enforcement of. And uh, the things that are relevant are violent criminal histories, mental health issues, and patients who hold medical marijuana cards. <laughs> yeah. So why are the... Uh, why is it... There, why are we talking about uh, if guns are off limits for medical marijuana or cannabis patients? And the reasons has um, been for uh, two main reasons, but we're talking about this in the context of gun, the guns being illegal when marijuana behavior is involved. And obviously we're talking about a number of states that have either made marijuana medical legally medical, or now uh, made it recreational. But the firearms prohibited status as violent criminals and the mentally ill dates back to the Gun Control Act of 1968. It was during this uh, particular legislation where they began to proclaim that your Second Amendment right is not absolute, mm -hmm. and there are certain limitations to it, like other constitutional rights, yeah. and it prohibited anyone from possessing a gun or ammunition if they were addicted to drugs mm -hmm. and or any other controlled substances. So the issue... Not just an addicted, but a user of... Well, the point of the control of, of cannabis, the point of this issue was that rising out of this was the understanding that cannabis was Schedule 1. Mm -hmm. Anyone using it can't be used for any other purpose other than, yeah. you know, to, for punishing not reasons. Right. Certainly not medical. And then uh, in 2011, the ATF uh, issued a letter, which was an open letter to the federal uh, firearms licensees, which um, came out and stated that um, it makes it unlawful for any person to sell or otherwise dispose of any firearm or ammunition to any person knowing or have reasonable cause to believe that such a person is an unlawful user of or addicted to a controlled substance. Yep. An inference of current use may be drawn from evidence of a recent use of possession or controlled substance or a pattern of use or possession that reasonably covers the present time. So when they describe this in this open letter, you know, this is the area that, um, that links in medical marijuana patients and, uh, and caregivers. And, um, but understand, though, that the... Well, the, well, the uh, Bureau of uh, Tobacco and Firearms Investigations, this agency, they are not in, they do not regulate the uh, firearm licensing at the state level. It's, it's, it's local now. It's no, not even county-wise. Right. That's not true. Well, the licensing, the, the permitting, the, the possession of... The licensing of the federal firearms licensed dealers is all, it's okay. all yeah, regulated right, but by... I'm, right, right, but I'm and, saying the possession of a firearm... To possess a firearm. Right, that's all state, 100%. State and local, yep. right. And we've got different, that, that, that's the point I'm trying to make. You've got federal law, which I just proclaimed, state law, state law. Um, yeah. It's difficult for them to enforce this idea if they're in a state, obviously, that recognizes medical marijuana. In Michigan, it's impossible because the two acts specifically forbid them from doing so. Well, and when you go to purchase a firearm... Mm -hmm. from, you have to fill out an application from like from an FFL dealer, like Dunham's, yep. for instance. Yeah, and you go in and you're going to fill out a form. Yeah, 
And on that form, it's going to ask you if you're a user of illicit drugs. Yep, including marijuana. And it, it has a special statement on there, which they updated the form back in 2016, that mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. including adding a warning statement that the use of marijuana is illegal under federal law, regardless of whether it has been legalized or decriminalized for medicinal or recreational purposes in the state where the transferee buyer resides. Mm -hmm. So that's on that form, Michael. Understood. Wait, was that which form? For the local form? For the, uh, no, for the federal. Uh, when you go to Dunham's to purchase a firearm, long gun, handgun, right. whatever it is, right. you're going to have to, you're gonna have to fill out this background check form, federal background check form. Yeah. And form 4473. Uh, yes, sir. That is exactly it, Alan. Well, I would say this. It asks, it, uh, asks you if you lose yeah. illicit substances, and then it reminds you that marijuana is, in fact, an illicit substance. Under U.S. law, whether you reside in a state that uh, has legal for med medicinal or otherwise. It's not that clear of an answer. I mean, I know what they want to get at. And if the definition of marijuana as used in that particular statement was, was clear or even was relying upon the current definition, I'd be more, be easier to give an exact answer. But the definition of marijuana has changed. We have hemp now. It's not, uh, marijuana may be considered that as it's described there but the definition of marijuana is the cannabis TVL plant i don't think that definition considers it furthermore the idea of uh your patient status is one of privacy and privilege and how a person uses cannabis may not be the same on the day that they fill out that particular application you are correct sir and someone may have a card they may use topical cbd they may use topical low THC. you know it may not even right. be in their bloodstream. And the idea that that's considered using when there's no psychoactive effect without even proof of it being... What if the CBD came from hemp? That's a good point. Which is federally legal. That's a good point. And it, it brings us to the, another topic we're, we're going to talk about here. But um, I, you know, listen, I, I, in a way, the issues come about because you are potentially putting something in writing that could arguably be used against you yes and uh, filing false federal documents right. or something i don't know some kind of fraud or perjury of some kind but um i think it does come down to the uh, details of course because on the day that that's signed the question is what were you in that state or not if it changes later on do you have a duty to report i don't think it says that no it does not you're allowed to possess a weapon as you become a patient yeah question is whether or not you can get other ones after that yeah. is one of the issues. And then right. there's and also, always the option of just not buying from an FFL dealer. Sure, you can go to a gun store. That's a little bit different than the gun show, Jim. I know you want to show off your gun. But no, uh, the, no, gun the gun dealer, gun show, yeah, as it yeah. goes... Um, you got to buy tickets to that gun show. If you, purchase, <laughs> if you purchase your gun from an unlicensed firearm dealer at a gun show, as 22% of all firearm sales are conducted, you don't even need to have the background check performed. Really? At the gun show? Yeah. Wow. It's true. Wow. That's true. You When's can, the next Gibraltar? Yeah. But that's only for that, that. There's one caveat to that. So that's only for, um, you know, long guns, right. for rifles. Right. Absolutely. Shotguns, those sorts of fire. Handgun, do you have to get, you've got to go to the, the sheriff and you've got to ask them to mm. run I've your seen, background. I, some of the feedback we've gotten on this regard is one. One, the... Um, Going to a gun range, mm -hmm. he'll ask you if you're a patient or not, and ask you because well, I've seen that on applications. Okay. Secondly, the um, requirement. Where did that happen? Do you know? Can that's you name names? No. You were well, signing a form at the place that was selling ammunition because the possession of ammunition is included in the uh, the 1968 gun gun. Uh, act. Yeah, I, I just I haven't I haven't heard that one yet. But there, but do you understand you're at I a haven't gun? either. Yeah, so so because you're, you're buying ammunition at the at the range, maybe you know what I mean. Mm. Maybe just the use of the range. They don't want people that are marijuana patients. Well, that's okay. That's the first. Secondly, I have heard because what has happened is that the there's a requirement in Michigan that if you own a pistol or going to buy a pistol, mm -hmm. or even privately buy a pistol from somebody else, yeah. You have to have a permit mm -hmm. to possess that. Yeah, pistol. but you can get the purchase permit from your police. Yes. It's, okay. It's super this is my, easy. Right. Of course. But in doing so, some of the department, it used to be county-based, and there would be a board. I have a pet for the CPL. 
That's for the concealed pistol. For license. all the board issues, getting a right, getting a CPL. But the registration was through a. There was a gun board in, in, in regulated this this activity. They then there's no longer a gun board in the county. It's all local. Right. And the point being that some of those local applications for your possession of a pistol ask the question if you're a medical marijuana patient or not. The the local forms. Correct. I've heard stories about the police questioning people about their status. I've never seen it reduced to writing. Yeah, Westland, <coughs> city of Westland's one of those. Mm. They're not allowed to do that. I mean, it's it, it's clear as day. The, the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act specifically states, shall not be denied any privilege. And that absolutely falls into that category. And it, it's the same reason we can, that patients are allowed to drive it's the exact same reason. They shall not be denied that right, that privilege, solely because they're a medical marijuana patient. 